This is Judge Joe Brown, and we're listening to We All Be News. News Free Dixie for the 21st century. We All Be is honored once again to help on the one and only Baba Dick Gregory to tell us what time it is right now, because playtime is definitely over. How you doing today, sir? I am fantastic, and, and again, we just want to thank you, because there's millions of people around the world that's locked into believing because America is the richest country in the world, the mightiest country in the world, a respect for newspapers, because we, the American people, have never said, wait a minute, explain that to us. You know, explain what you just told us. And so when we have people like you that get traction and millions of people around the world listen, then you have other people with your talent, with your honesty, with your integrity that comes out there. And so you got a um, billion people around the world have another outset. They, they don't know how to deal with it, but it logically makes sense. Uh, since the last time we talked, you had all the stuff that come out <laughs> on the election. Who said this and who said that? Mm -hmm. So then you say, well, well let, let me run to the New York Times, the Washington Post, NBC. So we ask a simple question. There's a lady, and we as men know how men talk when they're with friends, when they're by themselves. You know, so you tell me the press haven't been in a locker room? what things have been said by men and you don't have to back it up because it's just like you're drinking old boy setting. Here's a woman that said Trump. Now, my, my, my view on Trump is he represents idiot, idiot, white, racist, Christian America that can get by with anything. You told from childhood, pray to God, not, not the church, not the Catholic church, the Baptist church, the Methodist church. Pray to God and God will forgive you. This is the same person I've been told that forgive me said if I sin and when I die, I go to that God and that God will burn me. Now, how do you tell me the most powerful, powerful entity in my brain. The universe of God made the sun, the moon, the stars, the water, and say to me, through my mother, through my church, you know, I'm a loving God, I'm a forgiving God. You must be like me. Okay, I have no problem with that. And then tell me, if I, commit certain sins and I die, I will go to hell and burn the rest of my life. Mm. As a child, I can't figure it out. Then as I get older and look at stuff they tell us, my mother told me, hmm? my mother told me that Santa Claus was a white man. My mother. And she buying the toys. Now, if she said, you know, uh, Santa Claus comes to poor Negro neighborhoods because there's a white Santa Claus, I'm a little scared to come in the black community after midnight, after dark. So I'm asking your mother, since your father, we don't know where he is, to, to buy these toys. I can handle that. And then I look around and the same white boys that was the slave master. I mean, they raped my mama, my sisters, my brothers. And then I got to go to them for salvation? 
I, I, I live in a country, man, just born innocent black child. I know nothing except what the universe put in my head. And nobody's ever told me, you know, there's just certain things we need to talk about. Like what? How can George Washington be a slave owner? And then I look at all my history books, and he's a hero. Dressed immaculate, president. So as a little boy, I'm looking at these white thug, ungodly pimps being portrayed. Huh? There's some spiritual leaders. The greatest democracy in the history of the planet. Them punks is responsible. Something don't work right. Huh? If you told me Hitler and them thugs, you know, invented chocolate cake, I can understand that because you can get some. But if you tell me Hitler and them put the greatest democracy, the, the, the greatest be kind of humanity together, then I'm confused because I really don't want to go against my mom, my church, my family. And so consequently, this universal God I'm talking about is not the church. The universal God I'm talking about made every ant, every bug, Every germ that I can't see. Huh? That God made that. Made daytime, nighttime. And now I arrive, my birthday weekend. I've been here 84 years, man. Going all over the world, talking to folks. Part of movements that would never kill nobody. The Martin Luther King, nonviolent. Yes. Are you willing to die? Yes. But not kill? Uh, yes. For my hero growing up, all the technology we didn't have then. So the greatest thing you could do for relaxation was no TV. Let's go to the movie. John Wayne was my hero. John Wayne said, if you right and they wrong, and they still want to believe that you're not right, kill them. Hey, John. Okay. And then King comes through. And say, under no circumstances should you kill somebody. So then I, I get to thinking this birthday. 84 years, man. I threw my little raggedy gun away. A 357 Magnum. So I'm going against John Wayne. I'm going against most black folks. I know I didn't know that many white folks. And now I arrive at this birthday where I'm out taking a walk. And I hear the trees blowing. Ooh, trees can't talk. And I say, I better get out of here. It's going to be a big storm. And what do I mean by that? A tree cannot talk. I've never heard God talk. I have ten children. When they two days old, Lil, my wife is in the room talking, they're in the bed. And I hear something strange and I run in there. So I can know at two, two days old if they're happy, if they're sad, if something's going on. But they can't talk. The universe is the same way. Huh? There's something you can do that makes me ask questions. Donald Trump, a poor, ignorant white boy. 
I didn't know this. I'm watching him. I'm listening to people on TV tell me how rich his daddy is. Well, who's his daddy? How come y'all ain't wrote books about his daddy? Huh? Anything has his name on it sells. Huh? NBC, CBS, haven't done a special on his daddy since this is where all this came from. Huh? All the money he has came from his dad, huh? Anybody can be the, the mob. When I grew up control construction, don't tell me about somebody's dad. Huh? And then they make movies of the mob. When I do a, a, a minor crime, I'm a thug and I'm a human, that's them colored folk. The mob killed judges, bankers. Anybody they wanted to kill, they kill, and then a white racist system makes a hero out of them. The God, that's what we looking at with Trump. They made him, Trump ain't made, Trump been here a long time. My grandmother's grandmother ain't never heard of a Trump until now. Was she here at NBC, CBS, ABC? Hmm? So I look at it. And I said, wait, if the president of Harvard or Yale or MIT or Morehouse decided I'm tired of all this, I'm going to change jobs. These, these three PhDs are not helping me in my mind. So they go and applied for a job picking up trash in the street. Not only do they have to bring in their resume, they just their resume, they got to bring in their last year's tax return. Here's a man running for president and he don't have to bring in his tax return. I mean, what's this about? And so we all excited over the election. First, a black man became president of the United States, the mightiest nation in the world. He has the power to stop war, start war. Huh? And yet, ordinary people have to bring in the income tax return. And Americans? It's so evil and ornery and vicious. Anytime you take a white boy who determines where this country go, and a white woman didn't have the right to vote, that's his mother, his daughter, his sister, his wife, his girlfriend. Man, mama, how come you didn't help me and tell me I'm dealing with a fool? All I did in my little childish mind growing up, I said, if that white boy treated his mama that way, my mother better not come out the house. What does this mean? It means in 1921, a section of the white female said, I'm not taking it no more. I'm not taking it no more. And then they lied on her, on their mama. Their wife, their girlfriend. She had to go to trial. She can't get a child, a, a trial of her peers. Why? Why? Because she can't vote. And I think about who we look at when we look at Trump. We look at a symbol of a white man. Hmm? A symbol of a white man. that frames this woman because she's going against his authority. She goes to trial, but she can't have a jewelry of her peers because a woman can't vote in America, which means you can't serve on the jewelry system at all. Now, now let's think, when you look at Trump, see this. 
Swamp. Your mother couldn't talk, but your daddy could. So if your mother was framed, well, let's put it this way. If you could go to jail for birth of the ugly child, but I had to give you a trial, mm -hmm. then you just bring in exhibit one, Trump, we don't have to say no more. If you could go to jail for, 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 for birthing a big head, man, I went out with a pumpkin the other day and pictures of Trump, and I said, I would like a pumpkin as big as this head. Here's a man, don't have to put no makeup on. All he has to do is just get there and just look at you. And you know you seeing something that maybe is from another planet. Hmm? So now let, let's go back. Here's a man that's talked dirty about everything, negative about everything. And white folks accept that? Black folk, there's a thing called crazy, insane. That's what he is. I just didn't know these many Americans was insane. If in the last year, the number of black folks have been murdered by the cops, white women, the way they love dogs, would burn the police station down. But when it comes my turn, and my head has been so damaged, you got black folks out there that think they are part of this filthy system. Well, let me tell you two things. First, George Washington, all them folks, man had some kind of perverted integrity. What I mean, well, you go back to July the 4th, 1976, at 12 noon, that day, they're going to declare the birth of America, the most unique, honest republic in the history of the planet. Well, tomorrow, July the 4th, 1776, boom. And then say, ho, 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 wait, 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 these white boys sitting around talking like they're talking in the locker room about women and about sex. They said, wait a minute, we can't do this. We cannot be a symbol of liberty when we slave on. So one of them came up and said, see that bell over there? Let's dust it off. And at 12 noon tomorrow, July the 4th, 17th, we're going to hit the bell. Boom! And the bell will be a symbol of democracy. And when they hit the bell, not the Baptist Church, the Catholic Church, the Muslim Church, the Hindu, the universal God cracked that bell from the bottom all the way up to the top and baffled their mind so they couldn't even turn it around. So in America, the symbol of democracy is a cracked bell. Now we can cut TV, we don't have to go no further than that, but since we're dealing with fools, So, nobody said, well, wait a minute, this bell is cracked. Why'd you turn it around? Well, a few years from now, there'll be a white boy named Ron. He'll be running on the Republican ticket, Trump. In the same way, we white folks didn't turn a bell around. We're not going to turn Trump around. You can't get no more honest than them white folks talking about we can't be the face of democracy. 
So we're going to choose the bell, and when they hit the bell, the bell cracked from the bottom to the top, and white folk kept going. Like there wasn't nothing wrong with it. And so, all this week and the week, 20 some days before the election, we're looking at the big debate going on. Here's what Trump did to women. Well, how do we, why do we find that hard to believe? What's more hard to believe than white men, and they know integrity. If you raping a woman and I'm holding her so you can rape her, I can be arrested for rape. But the fact that I'm holding her so you can do this, I can be a rape arrested for something but not rape. Huh? So America, black and white, to tolerate this, is holding the little child while it's being raped. And we, because of our religion, Christianity, we don't feel no dirt. None. Whatsoever. No dirt. Until it becomes your child. You know, those of you that's in America need to go out on Saturdays where the white folk go out to the park. Black folks too. Not that many. And they just so loving. They got the little four-year-old child kicking the football and, and playing touch ball. Go, Jimmy! But look like they don't give a damn about no other child on the planet. But they is. And so, I looked at this white woman and said, I, I was on the plane. Nobody told me what plane she was on. Say, well, she was in economy. And somebody, came back and took me from economy to first class where the people up there have bought a ticket. Sit her next to a man and we find out later it was Donald Trump. Sit her next to him and he started committing a crime with her. And something she said, as long as he was playing with my tops, my breasts, oh, I could tolerate that. But when he went under my skirt and started playing down there, I got up and left. Wait a minute. Somebody robbing your house, raping your mother, and you just leave the house? You don't make a phone call or you don't go to the police station? And we supposed to believe you? My God, America? That's a simple question. That's not the important question. If I leave here today and walk into a movie and a brick fall out and hit me in the head, the movie got a lawsuit. Huh? If I'm sitting on a plane and one of the people work for the plane, because you just can't pick me up, just an ordinary person on a plane, and take me to first class. And how come nobody, how come that woman didn't sue the airline company? You carried me, your employee, from the seat I paid for, happy with, carried me up to first class, did you tell me you was taking me there? I get up out of my seat and you take me past all them people. Did it dawn on me you might be taking me into the, the toilet to rape me? I don't know where I'm going. At least you let this wench tell it. She hasn't said what conversation went on. 
And then sit me next to a man that I should have been able to look at and tell I'm sitting next to a criminal. And then he started touching me. And nobody in her family, they must be as perverted as she is, called the police that day and told them what happened. And the airline didn't have to come and settle out of court. The New York Times and Washington Post didn't have to write about it. So are both of them crazy? Then if they are, you got to cut them some slack. If a person with mental problems went in and killed everybody in the movie, and once we examined them and found out they had mental problems, they can't get the electric chair. Hmm? Mm -hmm. So both of them need to be going to a mental hospital. He who's done it, and probably done it before, and she that had it done to her, then listen to her, listen to her grinning and smiling, then that's our election. So there's a universal God that says to George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, let me show you who I am. <sighs> look at the bell. Oh, I don't want to look at it because I, I might see something that, that don't represent liberty. So who is this woman who sits on a plane in her assigned seat? Somebody come up. Now, I know what they're going to come up with. Now that y'all out there is too stupid to ask a simple question, he gonna come up and say, the spirit did. The spirit just lifted me off my seat. And I said to the spirit, but I didn't pay. First, You don't have to. You a dog just like they are. American people, people around the world, news people, I knew the movie was corrupt. I didn't know it was as crazy as Trump. You don't see nothing wrong with a woman. You see nothing wrong with a woman on welfare going to get her a used car and somebody take her to the Rolls Royce place and say, you qualify for this. You see nothing wrong with that? Someone. I heard somebody a long time ago say this. If God don't destroy, destroy America, then that God owns Simon and Gomorrah, a serious apology. And so again, I say going into the last couple of weeks before the election, America, But they say, you deserve a break today. Somewhere. Donald. There's no word to describe him. Because when you describe him, you describe an America. Hmm? The richest people in the race got run out. And Trump ain't spent no money. Nothing but a chump. I stood up on stage the other night and said I bumped into Donald Trump and I told him I'd give you a penny for your thought. He gave me change back. America. I think it's too late. I hope it's too late. For the benefit of saving the planet, the part that you can destroy. World War III will destroy the planet. Only the God for us. 
that built it and put it here have the power to change it. And they don't need no help from you. Hmm? No, as well. Kennedy, hmm? the beloved Kennedy. Hmm? There's so much information out. We start with Robert Groden's third book in the series. This just came out. Mm -hmm. Third book. We knew that Kennedy was going to land in Dallas. We knew that they was going to put him in the limousine. And the route he was going was through the streets and then hit the the expressway. But 30 minutes before Kennedy was shot, somebody changed the route. Instead of going to the expressway, it turned on Elm Street 30 minutes before he was shot. The question, New York Times, Washington Post, thug punks, the question is, how did E. Harvey Oswald know six weeks before he was shot to get a job there because the limousine was coming down Elm Street. Now y'all should just cut the TV off, cut the radio off, and go to bed. Huh? How did he know that? Hmm? And then we got all these people we paying to protect him. We paying to protect the president. Huh? Oh, Mr. President, oh. And then you had three triumphs that was arrested after the shot was fired. E. Howard Hunt, CIA agent, Raul, Cuban, working with the government, and the third one, code name, so Frank Sturgis was the Cuban. Raul was the third one, the white boy that played in the movie White Man Can't Jump. Woody Harrelson. Yeah. Well, that's his daddy. That's his daddy there. They booked him on a John Doe, didn't handcuff him, didn't fingerprint him, and let them go. Mm. Americans. The great <laughs> white hope. Well, go give me that elephant. That, that, uh, go give me that fish out the water, the white one. Mm -hmm. And we're going to dub that one the white hope. Now, here's what happened. Thanks to Geraldo. Would he do it today? I don't know. Maybe then he didn't know he was Puerto Rican. Hmm? But we went to him and asked him, would you run these pictures for us on his show? Mm -hmm. hmm? His late, late night show. He ran them. Huh? He ran the pictures hmm? of these cops walking him. Hmm? Mm -hmm. No handcuffs. Nobody seemed to be upset. And who is he walking? Well, he's walking the man that shot Kennedy in the head mm. from the book depository. Hmm? From the book depository. Hmm? Mm -hmm. The sixth floor of the book depository. Hmm? That's going to take a minute to think. You got TV, Geraldo. We on his show. Mm -hmm. And we hold up the pictures. Thanks, Robert Groden, 
show is called Good Night America. Well, that's a good word for what's fixing to happen. Good Night America. Well, the world got to see it. And the world reacted different. But who can they go to? They scared now. Hmm? America with all of its power and we sitting here looking at something that nobody ever said happened. And so all you press people and all you cops, all you so-called Americans that knew it and didn't care, you part of it. So when Donald Trump come to your town, run out and hug him. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Huh? Now, I want to show you something. And to Robert Groden, it's Robert Groden. It's his book. These are his pictures. Now, remember, the sixth floor Lee Harvey Oswell was shooting. Here's a picture of him here downstairs in the doorway watching the procession pass by. He couldn't have been on the sixth floor. Here he is here. The picture of it. Now watch this here. Here is Secret Service agents riding on the back of Kennedy's car. Now, if you look at these agents here, looking at this person here, they looking. You got a you got a exact eye contest. Lee Harvey Oswald's here. The agents is here, and they looking at him. America, the world, that was before the shots rang out. So now, a couple of days later, the other Oswald is killed. Where? Well, like they killed black folks. Chased him down, pulled him out the car, and while he was putting their hands, his hands up, he thought, hmm, that they was going to, what? He's already arrested. Mm -hmm. They changing him to take him to the downtown lockup. Look at them two cops, he's handcuffed too. Huh? Mm -hmm. Look at the guy who's going to kill him, Jack Ruby. Look at him. Because as they run in to kill him, if you and I was cops and we got a guy handcuffed and we see somebody with a gun, we think they're coming to rescue him. Look at him. They have him through for their gun. They still got their hat on. Huh? They're not even looking at this guy. He walks in and just shoots him. And back then, America should have told you who we were. But a handful of us knew it. I didn't know it would take this long for this to happen. But just get to look at this here. Here, the two cops. Hmm? See, dress to kill. No, dress to watch a killing. Hmm? That's them. Today. Hmm? And now, we got the baby. See, on this time when Kennedy was shot, this baby that we see now is born. Not Trump. This thing that's fixing to take America down. The baby. Hmm? 
And so all at once, oh, people got upset. Well, this is where you're going. This is the third book that this brother put out. And, and thanks for all the places you can punch in Amazon.com and get it and look at it. I don't think you can undo what's fixing to happen to America no more than you can undo what happened to the Romans, the Greeks, the Egyptians, huh? Yes, sir. Now, thanks to Time Life magazine. This is the cover that convinced everybody that here's this evil man on the cover. The date? You see the date? Can you show it to the world? Yes, sir. Can you make it out for me? Make it out right uh, down here. Oh, uh, right, I see. I see. It's on the other side. Okay. It's uh, February twenty first, nineteen sixty four. The next year, yeah, right. this runs. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Lee Harvey Oswell. Most of you all who know President Kennedy was shot, but you don't know that a cop was killed too, Tibbet. So they're saying this is the pistol he used to kill Tibbet with. They're saying this is the rifle. Now you, in 63, is planning on killing the most powerful man on the planet. And with all these punks out here can get the most mighty rifles in the history of the planet. But he gets his from Citizen Roebuck mail order to kill the president. Now, thank God there is a God. Thank God. There is a God. And let me show you something here. Mm -hmm. If you look at the body, the body, mm -hmm. look at the shadow. The shadow is going behind him. Hmm? The, the sun going behind him. Now, look at his nose. It's very important. Look at his nose. The shadow on his nose is going forward. Think about this. You can't have the body shop going backwards. There it is, right there. That's the shadow of the body. And the nose shadow coming forward. Now if you look at the neck, you see the neck is dubbed on the body. Look at the body. The neck don't fit. They put a newspaper up there so you couldn't see it. The neck don't fit. You got this thug, fool, punk. Hmm? Talking about he going to jail Hillary. Well, if you want to do it, you lock them all up. Huh? And so again, you know, this country could be saved if it was you and your sickness. Audience, it was the New York Times, the Washington Post. And so somewhere, thank you, universal God. All the lies. I look at Martin King. Hmm? Martin King. The greatest humans that ever lived on the planet. King didn't die on the balcony of the Lorraine Hotel. King was still alive when they carried him to the hospital. The hospital that two days before all the important players was told that King would be shot. And no first 
respond to Kentucky him anywhere but to this hotel. And when you take him there, if he's not dead, they know what to do. Kennedy was smothered to death at the hospital. Come on, you're King. King, I'm sorry, yeah. King. Mm -hmm. Thank you. King was smothered to death at the hospital. Oh, we talk about history. You're looking at a lot. So again, I'm saying, the people who had the truth was part of the killing. And so somewhere, as we look at these last few weeks before the election, Thank you, Dr. King. Hold that a minute, would you? Mm -hmm. Two things I want to show you. You see, thanks to Brother Ron, we can tape, he sends it out. But the way you learned your ABCs, the way you learned your mother, father, is repeat. Mommy, 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 daddy, daddy. Hmm? And so if you look at this paper, at one time this is the top three papers in America. This was one of them. The Chicago Tribune. Can you see the date on that? Yes, sir. It's a... Uh March the 10th, 1978. What is it? Friday, Seven. March 10th, 1978. Okay, March the 10th, 1978. Yes, sir. Headline say what? FBI memo, use mob against Dick Gregory. J. Edgar Hoover sent a memo to the head chump in Chicago, Agent Johnson, to kill Dick Gregory. Huh? This is a white, powerful newspaper that ran the story on the front page. I had a copy before the head of the FBI in Chicago had it. I did. I never committed a crime in my life. And yet, the most powerful law enforcement agent in the world because they had a trillion dollar access to hire people and to kill people. Someone, me and Hoover, he dated, I'm still here. No. The most important thing I can probably show you, and then you understand why well, it's almost you can't do nothing about it. Why Trump is defying gravity. All the powerful people laughed. What's this fool doing? And now we're heading down the trail. Oh, cowboy. Cowboys couldn't sing. Oh, song they sing is the tumbling weed. Oh, and the tumbling weed. It's big tumbling weed. I used to see them in West Texas just blowing. Well, you old folks that know what the tumbleweed look like blowing, get a good look at it because the tumbleweed is you. Hmm? And if you could learn to sing the song, Oh, and, and if you could pump like the cowboy was doing. Can you see me pump on the horse? <laughs> That's the last few weeks you're going into the cowboy. Oh, and they right. Because out of everybody had something to do with it, it was 99.9% .9 men. So I'm glad they didn't call. Cowgirl. Mm. And have you ever thought about Brother Ron? 
where the cowboys came from? It was us. Mm-hmm. Ain't no white man gonna call himself a boy. Huh? White boys sit there on the slave farm and say, hey boy, bring that car over here. And unbeknown, the brother jumped up, jumped on that car, got his horns, and rode him over to where the white boy was and pulled that horn back and put on brakes. And that white boy said, my God, can you do that again? And he did it again. And that's when he wanted to be a cowboy. Can you teach me how to do this? And so I ran for president. A year after I ran for mayor of Chicago, Mayor Daly, evil, corrupt, Whew. and people were scared of him because he would kill you. They were scared for me. They said, do you know who this man is? Yes. You don't think he'll kill you? Well, I probably would if it wasn't for the real God that built the rivers, the streams. Babies don't come from you, they come through you. Babies come from God. So, that's another story for another time, but remind me to do that. That's right the running for mayor of Chicago. So next year, I ran for president of the United States. Why? I just tired of voting for the lesser of the two evils. The lesser of the two evils. Oh, let me see what I mean by that, Ron. Mm-hmm. Your, your grandmother's very sick, and you have to take care of her because you love her and she's helpless. But there's something you got to do to pick up from information. And there's nobody you can find to watch her for that hour, except two people. One guy who just got out of jail for raping little children. And he's been in jail 30 years and another guy that just got out of jail for raping old women. The one that been in jail 30 years. He uh, raped them and killed them. This old women. The one that just been in jail for a little time got out, and those are the two you have to pick from, called the lesser of the evils. Mm. The old dude had been raping women for years and killing them. The young boy that never killed but one child, raped thousands to kill one. So you pick the one that killed the child because you don't want to pick the old man been in jail 30 years. It's called the lesser of the two evils. The one that killed old women the way he gets his sex discharge. So you pick the one that just killed him children, the lesser of two evils. <laughs> so America, <laughs> as a comic, I didn't know God had this type of super humor, okay? You got two of them thugs to pick from, so I'm gonna let you pick it. Uh, to watch your grandmother. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. So right before this coming election will be Halloween. 
Halloween. This Halloween. October 31st. Halloween. The number one costume for you folks around the world, that's where you dress up like anything you want to be. And you can go commit a crime. And it's hard for the police to find you. Because you're not dressed looking like yourself. But in a white Christian society, the number one selling costume is not a Jesus outfit, but the devil outfit. The red devil is the number one selling outfit. For Halloween. We name schools after the devil in a Christian society. The Sumner Hall, Sumner High School, Red Devils, the Duke University, Blue Devils, Devils, never after Jesus, never after the I Am, the real God. Well, your last Halloween. Go devil. When my grandchildren asked me, she was 10 years old. I mean, sorry, she was 4 years old. Granddad, is God smart? I said, they say he is. Well, I think God is dumb. Why? Because if he sent his son here, to die for our sins, granddaddy wouldn't have been evil for him to kill the devil. Just one of them, and it's over. Ah. So on November the 4th, nineteen sixty-eight was the election that I was in. November the 4th. That night, they had to stop the count of the election because it showed Dick Gregory, the presumptive president of the United States, by landslide. Why? Because it showed me getting 9 million votes in the state of Pennsylvania. Not your country. And can you see that headline from there? I should be able to. Uh, it's a uh, election computer goose gives Gregory nine million votes. Election computer goose gives me nine million votes. Go ahead, because it will tell you the state of Pennsylvania. Yeah. Let's see. Some inaccurate data gets on TV before used is halted by a news election servicer it's, uh, by a Wall Street Journal staff reporter. Uh, New York, some machines just aren't to be believed. Take the big computer in New York that was designed to compile results of Tuesday's general election. At one point early yesterday morning, the machine was crediting Dick Gregory, the comedian term presidential candidate with 9 million votes in Pennsylvania. This was just one of scores of inaccurate... Thank you. Okay. Y'all heard that. That's what you're looking at now. The reason Trump is winning all these and the primaries and stuff is because the machine is tricked. Hmm. Tricked. Look at it. Go back, pull it. Go to the library and pull the Wall Street Journal, one of the most respected papers in the world because the people in the world are fools. Not another paper ran this story. This important. Somewhere. 
It's already decided. It's already been determined. What they didn't count in is the money situation. The chaos is fixing to happen. And the chances of you being alive four years from now is almost point zero. So again, I don't show you this to scare you. Fear and God do not occupy the same space. Just ask a simple question. somewhere and I just thank you man for this close to the election that we can sit here and look at this and so at least when it hits those of you that's watching knew it was coming okay? those of you that's not you'll find out in a minute And so before we move to another segment, you have a question you want to ask? Yeah, I want to ask, like, you know, you've been talking about the election, about the possibility or probably the reality of martial law. I know people want to know what can they do to prepare for the November the 8th and after that, what can they do? Nothing. Let's say the woman, Lillian Gregory, I haven't had enough money to marry her, but I need to wait another week. I'm borrowing some from a friend of mine. And I hear the God talking to me. You don't control this. When the nine months pregnancy is up, the baby gonna fall if it means death to the mother and the child. That's me, not the Pope, not the Vatican. Not the Muslims, not the Hindus. It's all. That's what you're looking at. Martial law, all you gotta do is Google. It's already been set in place. Just Google. President, executive order. Thirteen six zero three. That's the number of it. President's executive order six zero three to declare martial law. Hmm. Hey, police! You won't be able to throw a trick gun in the car. You won't be able to lie on me black folks and women. Mm. Your time is up. Money, time is up. And so again, if you look at, if you look at what happened and what's fixing to happen, mm, then you don't have to clap for Donald. He ain't, not, he ain't done none of that. America is half fools, half insane, on your way to be insane. And it's too late to apologize to black folks, to king, to the decent white folks, it's too late. This is in the same hands that created the universe. That's what we're looking at. Thank you. Now the question you asked, again, to me just now, about martial law. Mm -hmm. yeah. That happened, the order, in 2012, okay? Where are you gonna get food, you know? Where are you gonna get, well, everything's gonna shut down. Mm -hmm. Everything.
in the morphos. Pertaining to this. Pertaining to martial law. Huh? Pertaining to the election. Oh, oh yeah, I want to ask you like the rumor, like people said that Hillary Clinton died around September 11 of this year, that she fell down at the memorial. Yeah. It was a news report that came out in one of the New York uh, City stations that said she was dead, and then they recanted the story. Yeah. But the internet still think that she's dead and she was replaced. What are your thoughts about that? Well, first, the Secret Service is her protector. Mm -hmm. She's not. Her daughter don't ride on the limousine with a gun to protect her. They don't, don't have submachine guns to protect her. When she stumbled and fell, and the Secret Service didn't say to such and such a hospital, they said, all right, we're on our way there. Get everybody ready. Huh? Mm -hmm. That's not her daughter's job. So when she gets sick, the car, the Secret Service driving the car, mm -hmm. carried her to her daughter's house where they have no services to protect her. Well, I got people saying who been out here long enough not trusting this this is winch. Saying they monitor everything because they're part of it. And say the, the Hillary Clinton that went in the daughter's house wasn't the same one that came out. That's where it's come from. Now, are they rumors? It could be. But how did they get out there before it was retracted? Hmm. Yep. And also the situation with Russia. Uh, people are very much concerned with that, that they're doing it. Uh, evacuation drills over there with Putin calling people to tell them to come back to the motherland, supposedly get in preparation for a yes. big uh, global war. Yep. What's your thoughts about the Russia and uh, I guess American relationship or what's going on? It's over. <laughs> when a person is shot on the White House steps. And you have federal systems that alert the world that it happened. Those systems have been alerted that this was going to happen. What they haven't been alerted is Catholic Church, Baptist Church, the Muslim Church don't control this. Universal God. It's hope. So, like, let's verify one more time. We can't do anything about this situation. It's out nothing. of our hands. Nothing. You can't do nothing about it if you're like my grandmother, had a headache for 20 years and all you're taking is aspirins. And then yesterday they gave you a MI. Mm -hmm. X ray. All kind of tests and found out you got brain tumors. Too late. Hey, the aspirin ain't gonna work. Too late. Too late. Over. I also want to switch up a little bit. I know. That the uh, the Nat Turner movie recently came out, The Birth of a Nation. Yes. And they say it was a flop, but on the same day it came out on October the seventh, the family or descendants of Nat Turner received his skull back uh, from actually from Richard Hatcher, from Gary Indiana, the first black mayor. Yeah. He actually had it in his possession. He, it was donated to his museum for Civil Rights Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. It was got it from an activist family. They got it from a white family. They had it in their family for generations. A skull. Of uh, Nat Turner, it's supposed to be Nat Turner's skull. Skull back. Mm -hmm. And when did he receive it? Now he received it like some years ago, but it was descendants that got in touch with him, and he actually got it back to them on October the seventh, I believe. And in the uh, movie. And the movie came out October the seventh. Well, now ask yourself a question. Okay. The movie comes out October the seventh, mm -hmm. and he receives it information October the seventh. Come on. 
I mean, the family receipts go back October 7th. Yes, I know, but I'm mm -hmm. saying. Mm -hmm. Who? Richard Hatchett had it in his museum? And nobody asked where it come from? Mm -hmm. And how it get released that that information is there on the day that the movie's released? That's why America is in the situation she's in. Not only is it heavy trauma, you got something like you just mentioned that nobody can figure it out. Why? Mm -hmm. This was plotted before. This is what this is about. Tell my grandmother what Nat Turner movie is about. It's about this slave preacher named Nat Turner who back in, I believe, August of 1831 led a slave insurrection down in Southampton, Virginia, killing about 60 white folks who had slaves, who owned slaves. And uh, he was ended up you know, captured and killed at the age of 31. Yeah. And so again, I'm saying, all of this just happens to come out now. Hmm? That's strange. With the movie. Huh? Mm -hmm. Now. This universe talking. I also had a lot of, uh, this year been an interesting year in terms of celebrity deaths and noted people deaths. Uh, I guess because of the news, the information age, but it's like a lot of people have been dying lately of note. And I just want to get your thoughts about uh, the recent the recent passing of Brooklyn DA Ken Thompson, the first black DA in New York City history. He died when he revealed he had cancer. And well, died. first, mm -hmm. a whole lot of people die of note. Mm -hmm. But if it's not of note to the people who's doing it, how would you hear about it? Yes, sir. When's the first time you heard of the, the, the black guy who was at DA in New York? About two years ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. Was he the DA then? Yes, sir. First time? Mm-hmm. Do you think anybody else in the world, around the world, knew he was the first black man left at DA? To be honest with you, I didn't find out till he died that he was the first black DA. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And so, the question is, is it legitimate or did something happen? Mm -hmm. huh? So if you decide to investigate it, you go ahead, Bob. And so, they have the money to put it together. So you got the money to do the research to find out. And the minute you come out with it, they stop your call, say you were speeding, and there was drugs in the car, and a gun in the car, and they checked the gun and found out it was used in the murder of so-and-so, so-and-so in, in 1922. You weren't even born then. That's how they make mistakes. That's how the universe follows up. Mm -hmm. you know. And also, I mean, oh, I'm kind of switch up a little bit, but I know people have been wanting me to ask you questions yes. about certain things. And a question that people keep on popping up, you know, with the recent passing of Prince and also Michael not too long ago, and other people like that in the music biz, people I want to know your take on Sam Cooke. What happened to Sam Cooke and Otis Redding? Well, they was talking about creating a black network to deal with black music. Mm -hmm. Oldest Redding, and you can Google this, right. said no longer will white folks control black music. In two weeks, we're coming out with the master plan and just playing Christ in a cornfield. I mean, in the water, a lake, whatever that water, huh? you know, in a lake. Oldest Redding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And. Same thing with uh, Sam Cooke. Mm -hmm. And they made it sound like he was in a hotel room in L.A. with a lesbian, and the lesbian's lover got mad. So Ooh. that sounds good to people that like gossip. All right. Okay? And so it really don't make no difference. You know, it's already in motion, in motion. Now I just want to talk about, because it's something that you always bring up, I know, about Marcus Mosiah Garvey. 
like the recent push to have him pardoned by the president. But you always say something that it was a person that betrayed him that a lot of people revered. Well, wait a minute. Go back and say it. Okay. What, what's, what, what you say? I always say what? It was a person that betrayed him. No, no, before oh. that. Oh, well, Marcus Mazzai Garvey, they're trying to get a pardon for him uh, from the president, his family, and supporters. Well, no, no, just hold it right there. Mm -hmm. They've been doing that for two years. Uh -huh. They have to get, they want to get 200,000 signatures. Yes, sir. All right? Mm -hmm. They only got 25,000. Mm -hmm. If I was president, I wouldn't waste no time on some stuff like that. Yes, sir. Huh? Y'all serious? Mm -hmm. One of the greatest minds ever? And you all talk about you love him? You could get more bottle caps to get some drugs than to honor this great man. So we always come up with this chump stuff. Here's a president got to go. He's president, but they got committees out there he got to get passed. And so they say, well, okay, how long the movement is going? Oh, it's two and a half years. How many signals do they want to get? 200,000. How many to get? Uh, less than 25. Man, get out this room. Hmm? Mm -hmm. So y'all got to stop being emotional. Huh? He's that great. Huh? You out here listening with an attitude now. How many, how many signals did you get? Huh? How many signals did you get? I didn't know nothing about it till the last week of the deadline. Nobody got in touch with me. Huh? Nobody got in touch with me. And y'all out there selling wolf tickets over some bullshit? Huh? If I got to get 200,000 hot dogs to give away at the Marcus Garvey Festival and in a month before your two year period is over, I just got 25 hot dogs? Cancel the party. Huh? Cancel the, and it's easy to do, I do blame it on white folks. And I'm not one of these that say, I think white folks are blamed for everything, but black folks, when you understand, huh? The great, say, say what you said to me a few minutes ago. Uh, you, Marcus Garvey. Yeah, what'd you call him? Uh, Mosiah, Marcus Mosiah Garvey. And what? The uh, great? The great leader. And you can't get, huh? Yeah. You cannot get? 200,000 to send to the president? Huh? Oh, I need you to come. Oh, I need you to come to D.C. so bad and bring your camera. But I can't send you the money to come? I can't get you a ticket in two years? Something ain't right. But let me tell you who Marcus Garvey. When Hoover busted him, a black woman. Eventually her name changed to Queen Mother Moore. Hmm? I got personal friends that get upset when they hear me say that. Mm -hmm. Truth do not have to be validated by your crooked knowledge. The great thing that we've not been told about is he was so beloved by black folks. He raised millions of dollars. No one in the history of America had raised that kind of money and wasn't dealing with the stock market. So when who was set him up with the, 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 the woman, they were scared to kill him because they knew the love that black people, a handful of white folks had one. So they made a deal. We'll let him out of jail. But you got to go back to Jamaica. So he said, well, I want to speak to the people one more time. So they set up a barge mm -hmm. in New Orleans for him to speak. Millions of people went to New Orleans to hear this great man speak. They gave him over 300 something million dollars that day. 
and he just take change. Mm. And that's how it ended. He goes back to home. And the people that love him didn't pick up them. And now, you had a black president, and we need signatures for the president to do what? To pardon him. To pardon him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To pardon him. And we couldn't get 25,000 in a two year period? <laughs> And you say love the great who 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 thought he was great other than you and me? Mm -hmm. hmm? See, once you get too emotional with the bullshit, mm -hmm. then you miss the whole picture. Well, who ran the operation? Was the CIA? Was some people put there to do exactly what happened? Did the president know about it? What else have you been asking you to ask me? Yeah, this one right here. Um, somebody want to know, is uh, Michelle Obama, is, is she a uh, he? That was my want me to ask you that. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. But why, why wouldn't they say things? Okay. Nasty things about people. Mm -hmm. hmm? Why wouldn't they? Hmm? Yes, and again, how does this contribute to, and I'm asking you this now. Yes, sir. Huh? They turn you, with your brilliant mind, the stuff you put out there, they turn you into reporting gossip that ain't gonna help nobody do nothing. Right. Huh? Mm -hmm. But I'm not gonna let them sit here and say, you know, Dick Gregory said, goes, no, no, you take the blame for that. Mm -hmm. If I knew something like that, I wouldn't take. How cheap is gossip? Huh? Mm -hmm. How cheap is gossip? But yet and still, you, and I don't understand why you do it, you can't get no bigger than you are. Mm -hmm. All over the world, people say, hey man, thank you. And you reach down to some stuff that, uh, you didn't say I got information. Here's your picture of her in the bed with the man. Right. Okay? All right. So somewhere, but let me, let me just show you something here. Yes, sir. That I heard nobody discussing, no one discussing at all. And now tonight, we let people go to bed and say, oh, Michelle Obama is a man. What you hear? I hear Dick Gregory. They don't know who you are. But I'm not going to let them do it. I have never, I've heard it. I've heard stuff. I just showed you me. The FBI said, use the mob to kill Dick Gregory. Huh? Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? They want me dead. Huh? I thought I had it, but uh Mm -hmm. Oh, you got it? Okay. Yeah, no, I haven't, but I, uh, it'll be here. I want to ask you something that got cut yeah. off in, a, in an interview. I was interested because you said that we should put our young children in drum and bugle corps. Yeah. And I want to know the reason why. Cause I, didn't, I, couldn't, I didn't get a chance to well, hear it because it was cut off. Simple reason why. Okay. Simple reason why is this. You know what I mean? Black folk don't have the money to send their children to college. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes, sir. So at four years old, if your son or daughter starts learning how to play the bugle mm -hmm. or drums, that means they play all the way through grade school, all the way through high school. The law is in America that football teams cannot have more then 85 football players. Mm -hmm. The band can have 400. It's easy to get a scholarship when you've been playing the drum and the bugle since you was four years old mm -hmm. to colleges. So you get to go to college. And one of the big things, the people who don't understand football or know anything about it, they wouldn't know that how easy it is. You, you, you start doing that before you start running track, before you start playing football. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, 
what I was looking for is a picture that was released pertaining to Monica. Yeah, I got it. I see it. It's down the phone. I got it. I didn't show the last time. Here it is. Okay. Okay. Now, this is very important. That's what got Kennedy, Clinton, in trouble. Mm -hmm. That's what they're discussing, Monica Lewinsky. Right. Now, get a good look at the picture. That's Clinton's back, her face. Mm -hmm. Now, look, this is a bad picture I've got. I left the other one at home accident. Look at all those hundreds of people on the White House lawn. <clears throat> they got on summer t-shirts. Mm -hmm. She got on a winter hat and a winter coat. The picture has been dubbed in. Okay? The picture's dubbed in. Everybody there got a, and what y'all need to do is Google that. They got hundreds of pictures from that. And then wonder how come she got on a winter outfit and the rest of them have on t-shirts. Mm -hmm. Is he part of it? This famous picture here? Mm -hmm. that's, what, that's what it's about. You can think for people. You can show them stuff. And then point out things. That's right. That's all. And if I don't want to wake up, then I stay asleep. Here. Can you see the paper this ran in? Yes, sir. It's the New York Times. New York Times. Headlines. The mythology, 1.5 million missing black men. 1.5 million black men is missing. That don't mean they're in jail. Where are they? Huh? Yes, That's the question. That's the question. Now, the New York Times huh? said 1.5 million black men is missing. Where are they? Huh? Yes, we know about organ transplants. Where are they? Now, watch this here. This document is the military plan the orders to kill King. Hmm? Yes, sir. Can you see, can you make out the headline? Yes, sir. Making it out. Uh, so my grandmother can see it? Subject, uh, at the action report. That was, that was the code name, to S kill King. Yeah, Lantern Spike. Lantern Spike. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Said, okay, I'm gonna the whole thing. At the action report, civil disorder operation, lantern spike, uh, March 28th through April 12th, 1968. Now, let me tell you what's important about that. King was killed, shot April 4th. Yes, sir. This went out March, what? Uh, the 28th. Killed on the 4th, they had to come out of there when? Uh, April 12th. That's to make sure that anybody else see anything we need to kill them before we leave. That was then his last March too, March 28th. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is the document from the federal government. Huh? Did you did you get to see that right there? Let's see. What's that say? From my grandmother. It says Commanding General, US Army Intelligence Command, attention ICDO, Fort Hollyburg, Maryland. Fort Hollibird, Maryland, that's where they came out of. Huh? Okay. And now, if enough people, even this late, asked about this document, somebody got to give them some answers. Yes, sir. Hmm? And so again, I'm saying that when we look, I mean, I started off, I'm the one to release these pictures mm -hmm. with Brown, you younger folks, Ron Brown. Yes, sir. Was the first black to become head 
of a major cabinet post. First one. Mm -hmm. He was head of the money. He was the Secretary of Commerce. Mm -hmm. He died in a plane wreck. That's his body on the ground. That's the bullet hole in his head. Yes, Who brought it to me? The white folks at the Armed Forces Institute of Pathology. Mm. Okay, so they couldn't deny it because the people that did the autopsy brought it to me. Okay? All of this is going on. There's the pictures of the skull. They brought it all to me. Huh? Yes, sir. There's so many decent people out there. If they find somebody they can give it to. Mm -hmm. Well, let's give it to Dick Gregory. Mm. And thank God for Kathy Hughes. Because any time we had something, we could take it. And she and I did a show. Mm. And we could run it on the show. That's right. Not gossip. Stuff that you might think is gossip because you wouldn't believe the government would do this. That's right. For instance, the South Carolina shooting in the church. Yeah, Mother Manuel. Yes. Yeah. In the church. Mm -hmm. Now, the questions we got to ask hmm, is one, did any of you all know that that's where the church with Juneteenth was invented. Mm. Hmm? You hear me? Yes, sir. Juneteenth. That's when slaves was free and the Liberation Day. They said, well, we just want the right to keep our slaves till harvest. Mm. And so it's an array of dates. The biggest celebration of Juneteenth is not in America. It's in Canada. Why? That's where the Underground Railroad ended. And the Canadian people was there to help them. Food, clothes. And so what happened then is here's a, a white boy, teenager, gets in the car and drives 200 and some miles to go to that church. And the day that he was killed was the, be the beginning of the world finding out. And this is what they found out. On the 16th of June, starts Juneteenth. It ends on the 17th. Mm. How did he know if I get there and shoot them people on the 17th, that's the last day of Juneteenth? And for those of us that grew up in the black church, the one thing you can't get next to if you come to church with a stranger is that black preacher. How did this white boy come there by himself, sitting in the circle, Mm -hmm. next to the black preacher. Hmm? How'd he know that if I kill him on the 17th, that's the last day of Juneteenth. Hmm. Hmm? Now, this article never ran in an American newspaper. I think it ran first on your show. Yes, sir. What's it say? It says, Daily Mail, U.S. Oh, 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 Daily Mail, that's in London. Paper. Yeah, UK paper, yeah. Yeah. Um, sorry about that. All right, sorry. It says, uh, let me see. Make sure. Go back to Daily Mail. Daily Mail. London paper. London paper. And it says. The you shooting took place on the 17th. Yes, sir. Go ahead now. It says, U.S. to fast track $29 million to help Charleston shooting victims' families. Okay. This is Reuters 
The Justice Department will fast track the sending of $29 million to South Carolina to help families of victims of the mass murder of nine churchgoers at a historic black church in Charleston. Now hold it. That's two days after the shooting. Mm-hmm. How'd they rec- write a check that fast? Mm. How'd they write a check? That story is about what happened on the 29th of June. Headlines again. Not one American paper ran that story. Go ahead. Okay. And what's it say? It says, a unspecified portion of the money allocated under the government's National Crime Victim Assistance Formula Grant Program can be used to provide <laughs> services to the families of victims of the shootings at Emmanuel AME Church. Okay, now, again, the shootings took place on the 17th. Mm-hmm. The checks went out two days later. All right. hmm? Two days later. If you go back and look at, and this is your sign for the next show, Go back and Google the grandmother in the church that said, I told my grandson, my grand, my six-year-old grandson to play dead. The reason I asked you to Google it, because you'll find out she was killed. So who told the world that she told her six-year-old grandson? And if you've been around children, you know, when them gunshots start going out and the screaming and hollering, they're going to move. Hmm? So there you go. Is there any more questions that the folks? Also tend to be on the gospel side. They're not. <laughs> so I, um, let's see. I'll see if I can ask one. So much that for ask. I know I'm going to forget something as I leave. I'll try to see if I can get something. Mm. Oh yeah, I want to ask you about this. I think it's interesting. I actually had a chance to go to the uh, National African American History Museum. Yes, it was incredible. Yes, but my thing is, I noticed some things. Um, they didn't really talk about College E. Wilson at all mm-hmm. at the whole museum. Yeah, and he's the father of Black history, mm-hmm. which I think is interesting. But also, uh, I had a chance to run into. Uh, Bernard Lafayette the third mm-hmm. he didn't see his father in that as well but you know there's so many things there's only so much you can really put into the museum yeah. but my understanding they only showed about 10% of what they actually had so I want to know <clears throat> have you been to the museum or, what, or what's your thoughts no, about I, I had to leave the country I, I was at the the affair the president had that Friday mm-hmm. at the White House mm-hmm. but then I, I just got back in okay but I'm going by there but then again you got to ask how much American history can you show? Sure, I'm mad. Mm-hmm. If you don't show my mother. But then you got to ask. Then you got to ask who was in charge of it. Right. Who picked it? Did you let Southern Redneck Crackers pick a museum for George Washington? Mm-hmm. Did you let Southern Nigger Hating Crackers pick the museum? Huh? Mm-hmm. For the Army, the, 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 the Northern Army. Let me tell you something. That's more shocking than what you just said. Okay. If you can, if not, then you have to do it a later time. Go by the Lincoln Monument. Lincoln is known all over the world, hmm? not as the 16th president, not as the person that freed the slaves. Lincoln is known all over the world about his Gettysburg Address. Huh? Four scores and children all over the world learn this. Huh? Mm-hmm. Do you know it's not one word, the Lincoln Monument, about the Gettysburg Address? And that's why I said, if you have time, go over there and show the people the wall. There are people. Who's that family? He's 16th president. Mm-hmm. There's people, huh? That don't know he freed the slaves. Mm-hmm. Huh? 
but not one word about the Gettysburg Address. So who's in charge? Hmm? Who's in charge? And so when you say the, the museum, mm -hmm. I'd be, I'm surprised I was in it. My children wouldn't say, oh, Dad, oh, I am. Why? Because how much space do you have? Mm -hmm. You could have made that whole museum talk about King in the SCLC. Hmm? I want to add, there's no artifacts of King in there because of the King family issue situation. But that, you just have to look at why. Okay. You know, maybe they plan on opening up the museum. Hmm? If you want the greatest jazz people in the world, you. Mm -hmm. And I paid you money for certain rights for certain things. Mm -hmm. Why would I participate in somebody else? You know. There's questions that need to be asked. Mm -hmm. But what do that mean? Mm -hmm. You know. Everybody that I see that been there just loved it. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, that's incredible. <laughs> and how much money did they say it took? Anybody know? Uh, uh, you know what? I had read an article that uh, appeared in the Howard University newspaper. Yeah. It's like a lot of the donors were black people, not just you know, well off black folks, like the $20 million donations from like, yeah. Oprah or Robert Smith, but you had a church in Virginia, I believe, that donated a million dollars. You had yeah. black folks that donated everything. And to come to find out that the, the museum was actually started almost 100 years ago, you had black Civil War veterans going to D.C. demanding that the Congress yeah. create a museum and 100 years later, it manifested. So then who's the one that put the artifacts together in the, the black folks that donated it? Yeah, it was black folks. I know a sister, uh, 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 she's almost 100 years old, but she's in good, really pretty. No, I said, who sit on the board? Oh, who sit on the board? Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure. Well, I know that's the, what I'm saying. Yeah. I know the guy Lonnie Bunch who runs the when he's the uh, running the museum yep. fundraiser guy. I know he's a black man. I know Dr. John Ho Franklin son works with the museum as well. Yeah, but did what authority did they have? Yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. What authority did they have there? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say again, Abraham Lincoln. Right. Not one word is mentioned on that mall. In the Lincoln Monument. That's right. About the Gettysburg Address. That's right. That's right. I thought about that. That's cool. That don't make sense. You know. Okay. <laughs> like you said. And so somewhere, here's what we'll do. Mm hmm. Before the election, you and I will sit and talk. Okay. And if we have time, we'll go by. The Lincoln Monument. Okay. I don't know if you're gonna be in the area, if you're gonna be someplace else. Mm -hmm. But if you can't, we'll go by. And we'll film the whole wall. And see. Maybe people be shocked. Yeah, I you tell me. Be, be shocked to have a museum about King and not mention that he was murdered. Mm -hmm. Not the family. There's known information that there's big hassle going on mm -hmm. with the family. Well, what caused it? I mean, I got ten children. When the call came through the king to his house many times, nigga, we gonna kill you. He couldn't hang up and call the police. Because that's probably who made the call. Hmm? Well, let's take it back a step now. So Coretta had to grab two children, and he had to grab two, and they can't leave the house. They just said, we're going to blow up the house. Do you know when you was a little boy, one or two years old, your mom or daddy carrying you, and they, you see that horrible look on their face? Mm -hmm. What happened to your brain? Mm. What damage did they come out with? Hmm? We ain't got no daddy. Hmm? Somewhere. You know, but you got to understand, you in the hands of monster, evil, evil people, with a trillion dollar kitty. Mm. 
Hmm? Hmm? I've been knowing what the Malaysian airline is. I talked to people that did it. You think I'm going to get on the show and say that and discredit myself? Also. With people who need to hear this information, mm -hmm. I'm going to get on there and say, oh, blah, blah, blah. Now they'll find out. You think Russ Limbo and Joe, they don't know what I know, all the white Christians that bring them information because they're trying to get in heaven and they don't know it, but I do? Not on your life. I get black folks call me from hospitals and say so-and-so just died an hour ago. I'm not going to tell you who the name was. It is so horrible and frightening. I just told Martin Luther King two weeks ago a story going to break about how they smothered his daddy to death on the balcony at the hospital. And I said the story's fixing to break. And I've told him every Negro that was involved in killing his daddy. <laughs> Everyone. But why you want to discredit yourself? Why you want to go, you got money to feed, to buy scholarships to millions of black folks? Why would you go to the gambling casino and lose it to white folks? Because hmm? then they would attack. The book Nigger, one of the best-selling books in the history of America. Nobody's ever invited me on the show to talk about it with all this scandal. Why? That's, you know, tens of millions of copies it sold. Okay? And nobody's ever called. They said, we'd like for you to sit this panel discussion. Mm -hmm. That's not important when you're in the battle of a fight for your life. If you in the front line of battle and you got that industry and you got to go in that place there before the troops can move on. Ain't nobody interested in your mama just died or your child just died. Damn them, man. The movement's bigger than your mama and you. That's what it's about, man. So even when them thugs is over-releasing the information, uh, the bigger picture, because I've got something in my hand mm. that uh, I knew right before one of my books came out, we got hold of the autopsy of Malcolm X. Mm. And the brothers were standing below the stage shooting up. All the bullets in Malcolm is going down. Mm. Hmm? All the book number went up. When I found out that Thurgood Marshall was a government agent, I didn't release it then because there was too much storm going on that I didn't want people out there. Oh, oh what well, all that stuff. His name is on, going to have to come off. The family member said, oh, uh, yeah, he, he, he worked for Hoover to guarantee Hoover there was no communist in the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. So we depend on you because people love you. People that have just told you but gave you documents. And those people got people that love them. And so they say, hey, man, what, what your man talking about next? Hmm? That's what it's about. Mm -hmm. And there's a universal force around you that they can't kill you. Hmm? Mm -hmm. They can't kill you. Let me, let me just show you this. We got enough time? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <clears throat> and then the next time we do the show before the election, you pull the information. Yes, sir. A woman got killed in Riverside, mm. California. She was having a, a epileptic seizure. She had her nephew, niece in the car, little time. Mm -hmm. 
she felt it coming on, so she pulled over to her, got out in the road and flagged down. A white man pulled over. And she says, my name is so-and-so, so-and-so. My mother's name, my address, my phone number. I'm having an epileptic seizure. Would you take my nephew to her and tell her where I am? Which he did, he did. They got there. Now remember, the white guy carried the little tot to the mother. Mm -hmm. She was in the seizure. They beating on the windows. They can't open the door. They can't get her to wake up. You can bite your tongue off in epilepsy. So mom called the police. Two cops came. Shot her in the head 14 times. Mm. I'm telling you universal law. Threw a gun in the window. And they said, she shot at us. Well, we might know what police do to us. But this niggas of white folks and niggas of around the world don't know. So all of us go out. Martin Luther King the third, Al Sharpton, Joe Matt. We just go out, pile of us. Do the investigation. You know what it's like for you as a father man to go to where your daughter and you call the police that blew her brains out. So meanwhile, we find out that they said she shot at us, but the universal God took over. And the gun they threw in the car didn't have a pin in it. Had they said she aimed the gun, they'd be free now. Mm -hmm. And that $13 million settlement wouldn't have been settled. Listen to me now. Mm -hmm. A pen was not in. They were so busy doing their filth, they forgot. And they do that every night. Mm -hmm. huh? But this one didn't have a pen in it. Did not have a pen in it. And had they just said, oh, she aimed a gun at us. Hmm? That, that, that little, but she shot at us. Mm -hmm. So that's your job. And your job is to be willing to die. Mm -hmm. hmm? You're a soldier, man. You're soldier on the front line. You gone too far to turn back. If if you went and hid in a basement for six weeks, people all over the world would think the government had killed you. Hmm? So you have to understand mm -hmm. your obligation, what the universe has gave you. Huh? Frank Wells, the black guard that opened up the door on Watergate when he found it locked and the light on. Frank Well. Now, let's listen to the story. When Nixon came in the White House, he cut off the federal job training corps. Frank Wells was one of the first to lose his job. He's talking to his mother's sister, his aunt. And she said, well, come on up here to Washington, D.C. and live with us. See if we can find you something. Him doing that pulled Frank Wells to him. So he comes here, gets a job at the Watergate. Walking through there one night to go across the street to get something to eat ham and cheese sandwich. And you see the door is taped and the lights is on. He didn't know. He opened the door, pulled the tape up, turned the lights on. He's walking back across the street and the door has been retaped. Is that wanting to be caught? 
And so here's a guy that made the call that brought Nixon to his knees. The guy who cut off federal money for job corps. That's how. That's how it works. And so just want you to to know. Man, I looked at that smile on your face just now. Mm -hmm. And the first time I ever wished I was a photographer to take that picture <laughs> and let the world see that mm -hmm. honesty and that integrity and know some of the things I know how you drive all over the country to chase us down. <laughs> it's like a stalking though. <laughs> you hear me? Yes, sir. Chase us down. Okay. How do you feel like I have an obligation for people? I mean, it's not as bigger than me. You yeah, know. Yeah. But no, being business, you can't see it. Mm -hmm. It was business to Trump. Mm -hmm. He saw nothing. All right. Okay. Um, I just saw it, that smile. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so again, I just said, man, I thank you. I look at Kathy Hughes, what she's able to do mm -hmm. with that show. I look at Carl Nelson, the Joe Madisons. You know, some can go further than others mm -hmm. because some got leeway. But I just say, man, to, to sit here, I just, my birthday, it's a weekend. Okay. Thank you for contributing to my birthday. Mm. You know, all I say is thank you. We moved so fast. I don't know if you're married, I don't know if you have a family, I don't know if you have a wife. But when we get on here, we bosom friends. Anytime I see you, I stop whatever I'm doing. Hey, my man, how are you? Hey, <laughs> hey, man, what, you know? That's, I owe that to you. Because together, we can beat this thug. Because it's the universal God. And so again, I just say thank you. Thank you for running me down, man. Thank you if your schedule's not jammed, you'll be back and we'll show the people the, mm -hmm. the no stuff that they didn't put on the, the wall. And then one more assignment. Mm -hmm. Abraham Lincoln's on a penny. Mm -hmm. You know how much it costs to make a penny in America? Uh, a nickel? Huh? A nickel? It used to be, I hadn't checked lately. Okay. It used to be a dollar 44 wow. cents. Really? I mean, yeah, yeah, a dollar 44 cents to make a penny. That's something. And then I'll explain to you why. Why Lincoln is on a brown. Penny. Yeah, we did that show before. We did it before. We do it again. Okay. My grandmother didn't see it. Yes, sir. Okay. Did you look up the fact that's what they charge you now to make a penny? I, I nah, I didn't look. I could look it up. No, I mean, how did you know it cost a nickel? It's just like it would cost more to make a uh, penny than an actual penny. Huh? It's like it would cost more to make a penny because it's like just the lowest cent you can get, right? A penny. But I mean, why would it cost more to you to make a penny? The white businessmen in America have the shrewdest minds in the world. So if you tell me it costs more mm -hmm. than ten million dollars to make a Rolls Royce, mm -hmm. then why? That's a good question. Why? I don't know. I'll That's research it. I'll research. So if it costs more to make a penny than a penny's worth, then how much does it cost to make a quarter? <laughs> or a dime? Yes, sir. Okay, so I'm saying, you know, because what I thought you were saying, that you didn't, you wasn't saying it, but I was feeling it after you ran it on your show, they took it down mm -hmm. to five cents and maybe to 
penny. Mm-hmm. Now they're not going to make it less than a penny. Right, right. To make a penny. Mm-hmm. So again, but that's the obligation that you have. How old are you? Oh, 36. Well, you don't have the right to do what 36 people do. You don't have the right to go to the dance or go to the party. You don't have a right to take that trip to Europe when I might need that plane fare to fly somebody else to feed my people that love me. Mm-hmm. You feed them. Oh, it's one thing being hungry from food. Right. There's another thing being hungry for information. That's right. And that's you the feeder. You got to be the farmer. You got to grow the crop. Huh? You got to till the grain. And at nighttime, when you hear something that sounds like water, you got to go see if the crop's going to be flooded. That's your job, man. Yes, and then you got to deal with people that think you're crazy. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, that's their way out. Mm-hmm. I'm embarrassed that you told me this, and I didn't know it, so I think you're crazy. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Baba Gregory, and the verses of the great Duke Elton. We love you madly. Keep on producing and pushing. Thank you.